We have seen the official end of the El Nino and are now switching over to a La Nina phase in the Western Pacific and around the world. The big question is, how does this impact typhoons? Well, some of the main points with these impacts is that you have to remember storms tend to form and move towards Southeast Asia. That includes countries like the Philippines, Taiwan, and into Vietnam. Stronger individual storms are also possible because of above average sea surface temperatures and more than normal storms as well, typically during La Nina years. Now, before I get into why that is, let's talk about what is the El Nino and La Nina. And I have a separate update in much more detail about this, but simply put, an El Nino is when you have this change in the trade winds where it typically weakens and you get above average sea surface temperatures off of the coast of North and South America with above average sea surface temperatures in the Eastern Pacific and below average in the Western Pacific. In La Nina, those trade winds increase and pushes those warm waters up against the coastlines of the Philippine Sea here and really across Southeast Asia, increasing convection as well as increasing overall tropical moisture and thus typhoons. We're already seeing that here through the month of June with that overall pattern switching with those warm waters off the Eastern Pacific over towards the Western Pacific. So this phase is continuing to turn on. As we go ahead throughout the year, not only with typhoons, but overall moisture flow and rainfall is going to continue to be seen across southeastern Asia as well. For example, this is the forecast for August, September, and October of 2024. So overall, with tropical systems, it does reflect this. This is where you have your cyclone genesis. That is the formation of tropical systems in the western Pacific and on average in the Philippine Sea east of Samar and Mindanao and towards the west of Guam as well. Now, where would those storms go in La Nina years on average is typically across the Philippines over towards the West Philippine Sea or moving off towards north. This is because with that change in the overall trade winds, the West Pack High also gets pushed further towards the west, allowing these storms to take more of a westerly track and moving eventually over towards places like Hong Kong as well. Now, of course, there are outliers in this overall phenomena but this is just the general average during La Nina years. For example, storms during La Nina, at least with landfalls in the Philippines, tend to be higher than those in El Nino years as well. So of course, we're gonna to continue to track this at westernpacificweather.com, always keeping you posted. Please hit that subscribe button and we'll keep you updated. But always remember, there's all these different factors that go into the formation of tropical systems. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta, as always, Stay safe out there.